Hello everyone, this is Brad McMahon with Trader Trading Headquarters. You are watching our free educational video series for traders and investors. All we ask in return is that if you like the video, like it, and if you really like it, share it with a friend. In the descending triangle chart pattern, there is a string of lower highs which forms the upper line. The lower line is support level in which the price cannot seem to break. Technically speaking, the descending triangle is considered a bearish pattern, especially when formed in a downtrend, but it can be bullish as well as bearish. Now in order to qualify as a continuation pattern, a prior trend should exist. However, because the descending triangle is definitely a bearish pattern, the length and the duration of the current trend is not as important. What is important is the health or the condition of the pattern. In this video, we're going to take a look at both scenarios where we're going to show an example of a continuation pattern as well as a reversal pattern. Now let's take a look at DuPont. In the chart above, you can see that the price is gradually making lower highs, which will tell us that the sellers are starting to gain some kind of ground against the buyers. Now most of the time, and we do say most of the time, the price will eventually break the support line and continue to fall. However, in some cases the support line will be too strong and the price will bounce off of it and make a strong move up. I'll show you this in another chart example. The good news is that we don't care where the price goes, we just know that it's about to go somewhere. In this case, we could place the entry order either above or below the support line. Now the lower horizontal line is considered support. So at least two reaction lows are required to form the lower horizontal line. The lows do not have to be exact, but should be within reasonable proximity of each other. There should be some distance separating the lows and the reaction highs between them. The upper descending trend line is considered the resistance. So at least two reaction lines are required to form the upper descending trend line. Now these reaction highs should be successively lower and there should be some distance between the highs. If a more recent reaction high is equal to or greater than the previous reaction high, then the descending triangle is not valid. Now the reason we want to define these trend lines is the basic tenet of technical analysis is that broken support turns into resistance and vice versa. When the horizontal support line of the descending triangle is broken, it turns into resistance. And sometimes there will be a return to this resistance level before the downtrend continues. Now let's look at APD. In this case, the price ended up breaking above the top of the triangle pattern. And after the upside breakout, it proceeded to surge even higher by around the same vertical distance as the height of the other triangle. Placing an entry order above the top of the triangle and going for a target as high as the height of the formation would have yielded a nice profit. Now as the descending triangle price pattern develops, volume usually contracts. When the breakout or the breakdown occurs, there would ideally be an expansion of volume for confirmation. While volume confirmation is preferred, it's not always necessary. Now once the breakout has occurred, the price projection is found by measuring the widest distance of the pattern and then adding it to the resistance or the support. So let's go back and take a look at DuPont. We had a prior uptrend and then we started forming the descending triangle. We had our lower line, which was our support, and then we had a descending line, which developed from a couple of reaction points. Now at this point, we don't know if this stock is going to break up or break down. And we do have some good indication below. We can see that we have increasing volume. And to me, this looks like more sellers are involved in the selling process. And on this day, we actually break through on heavy, heavy volume. And this was kind of a test to see if there are sellers in the market. And we actually pull back up and we bounce off of the resistance and then eventually break back down again. But this time we do close below the support line. As you can see, the next day we gap down on huge volume, and this volume is really our confirmation. Now remember, our support turns back into resistance. So if we didn't get in here, 
the stock did eventually move back up and almost tried to get to the support line again. But this time, we fell back down on big volume. The best way to trade this would be to measure the width of the triangle at the base and apply that to the bottom of the support level. And as you can see, we would have had about a seven and a half point move or roughly 12, 13% move. Again, we wanna look for the break in the support, the increasing volume, and then if we didn't get in there, we could have a pullback to that support line and a possible second entry. Now on APD, we had the opposite. This was actually a continuation pattern. So the prior uptrend consolidated and we have reaction points here and here for the resistance. And for support, we have more reaction points here, here, and here. And you can see during this consolidation, volume contracted. And at this point, as we approach the resistance, we could set our stop order 10 or 11 cents above that resistance line. And on this day, you would see the stock broke out nicely. Now it's important to determine what our expected value is of this trade. And one of the ways to do that is to set our target. So we'll take the distance of the base of the triangle and we'll add it to the breakout of the support. So in this case, we had about a four point move. So remember, when trading the descending triangle pattern, the move could go either way. So we could either break out or break down. So it's best to trade only what you know and not second guess what you think it's going to do. Thanks for watching this video. This was the descending triangle. If you like this video and would like to learn more about stock charts and patterns, visit our website at tradertraininghq.com. Here you will find lots of information on trading the markets. Go to our training tab and you'll find free courses, articles, trading view charts, watch lists, trade examples, books, and even a chat room. If you'd like to get a fill for our membership benefits, fill out this information here and create a password and you'll get access to more free lessons. The free lessons include simpler stock trading for beginners, candlestick patterns, chart patterns, free introduction videos, webinars, and a trading community where you can access all of our social media links. Please take a moment to read our disclaimer. The information provided herein is our opinions only. Under no circumstances do any statements here represent a recommendation to buy or sell securities or make any kind of investment. You are responsible for your own due diligence. To summarize, we do not provide investment advice, nor do we make any claims or promises that any information here will lead to a profit, loss, or any other result. These videos are for educational purposes only.